All right, welcome everybody. I'm going to be showing you how to make this lanyard. This is a um, kind of a circle braid on top, and then it comes down to, I believe this is called a snake knot, snake head, I don't know, snake knot, something like that. And the purpose of this is to wear around your neck and then at the very end be able to put like a small piece of leather and then put a you know, critter or something like that on the bottom or whatever it is you want to put on the bottom. So that's what we're going to be making. So what do you need? First of all you need, uh, let's see, uh, I have 11 feet of two different types of uh, 550 uh, paracord. So I chose two colors that go well together. This is a black, white, and gray, and then this is a black. So that way they kind of match when they're all done. So you need to have those. Uh, you need a nice pair of scissors or a knife. I chose scissors with a nice ribbon. It makes it extra special. Um, an extra piece of cord, um, about 10 inches, you'll see where I do that. I use that a couple times. And a lighter. Uh, this will work just fine. Um, I just have something that is a little bit more specific in its uh, torching abilities. So, first of all, what you do is you start by joining these two ends and just combining this together. In fact, actually you need to find the halfway point. So the easiest way to do that is to bring all the pieces together like that and then just go on to the opposite side and then you found the middle. Okay, now here's this is an important step. Once you've found the middle, go to the side about oh, six or seven inches. You'll see why. So once you grab here, so this was the middle, I'm going to the side by six or seven inches, I'll pinch there, and then I'll bring out my cord and tie a knot. So this is going to be the very tip of my lanyard. And be let me be more specific here. All right, so there we did that. So this point here, is going to be this point that's showing okay and you'll see that in the end okay now that I have tied this like that um, I go ahead and tie another knot because I'm going to slip this around a post just a simple knot one that you can undo later easily that's kind of the point here because we want to start braiding and it's just easier if we have something to uh, kind of pull against Okay, all right, so now I have a circle, I got that tip, and I'm ready to go. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, so you see I just put this around a, you know, a chair or something like that. It can tie it to anything, you can put it around your toe if you want. Um, okay, so I have one on top, and that's just going to be my multicolored one here, and then one on the bottom, that's my gray. And then I'm going to start my weave. Now this is a simple weave, but I'll go slow so you can kind of see it. Um, it's a two-step weave. Um, okay, so with the top braid, I'm going to go uh, left. Uh, the left piece and the right piece are going to come in together like that. Okay, let's see if I can pull that up just a tad here. <laughs> okay, so the left piece and the right piece come together and switch sides like that. Now what's important is that this they always move in the same direction. So this left one um, will go in the back and this one will go in front. So they pass by each other. The one on the left will always go behind. Okay, and now I do the same thing with the black. So while I'm kind of holding it, the black will do the same thing. I make my back one always come forward and the front one go to the right. See how that's going to the right like that? Okay. And then I just kind of cinch it. So I do the same thing. These two go back, they trade sides, and then these two trade sides. Cinch. Okay, let me back up just a tad. Okay, uh, once again, these go side to side. My one on the left goes in the back. And then when these two, the one on the left comes to the left. 
And it really doesn't matter which way you do that. You just have to be consistent. And every time you make changes, I'm sorry, every time you make a weave, just tighten it up a little bit. So now you'll start to notice that you're getting kind of tangled up down here. What I've discovered is the easiest thing to do is just to take a strand and pull on it and then take another one and pull on it. And then that will pretty much take out all of your little knots at the bottom. So let me keep tying these so you can see it. Okay, so it's time for the black one. So this on the left stays on the left, this one on the right goes to the right. And then back. And you'll find that you'll start to get a rhythm. Okay, now let me um, zoom in just a touch so you can kind of really see this here. Let me pull out my strands. Okay. So this one goes like that. And now I hold them and then they, this goes on the side. The right one goes in front, the left one goes behind it. Then cinch. Now you'll know if you're doing it right, if you see a consistent pattern. Well, you see how that's consistent? Every single one, um, they move kind of in a slant direction and they move in the same way. Each one of the, the opposite color will go the opposite direction, you'll see that. So kind of keep an eye on it to make sure that it stays kind of the same tension, um, although that's not totally important because that can, uh, you can kind of massage it a little bit like that and fiddle around with it and it will kind of come out like that. Um, so that is that. I'm gonna back up a little bit and let you watch this whole thing from afar. Now, a lot of the videos zoom past this part because it's kind of tedious to watch. I get that, but I really wanted to watch somebody do this. So I'll put in some time frames where you can actually zoom the video ahead if you want to skip this part. See now there's, it is starting to crumple up there. So just pull a couple of them out and that loosens everything right back up. Okay. I'm going to keep my hands out of the way so you can see this. Alright, so it's starting to gather up again. Just pull out a few and just keep going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on till I get down close to where I have two that are much shorter. Remember how we moved the center? So I have two that are much shorter than these last two, which are much longer. So I'm going to get I'm going to keep braiding till I get to about 36 inches of this, and I'll be pretty close to the ends of this. checking my braid to make sure that it stays consistent as I look up the rope or the braid to make sure that all of those um, lines are kind of going the same way. Now the first time I made this it took about an hour um, to make the whole thing um, but now that I've got this down it really won't take that long. Um, you'll find that you can crank these out pretty quick. having to move the chair back. 
All right. pretty close here. Let me do one that's wrong just to kind of show you what it looks like. I'm going to mess this up on purpose. I'll do just one stitch that's wrong. So actually, you know what? You can feel it because it's not when I try to tighten it up. It didn't, I, I know immediately that I did something wrong. Because they have to cross against each other. So if you're cinching after every two knots, you'll feel immediately if you did it right or wrong. All right. I'm going to stop and measure, see where I'm at. flexible measuring tape here. I want to get to about 36 inches. I'm at 29 inches. So just a little bit more. Stop and measure again. Okay, 33 inches. I think I'll eyeball this last bit here. All right, I think I'm about there. Okay, so I'm just gonna look, make sure that I'm good. Um, I think that's all correct there. Okay, good. So now what I'm gonna do is press pause because I gotta find some. Oh wait, wait, wait! I don't know what it is. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off. Actually, let me move. Okay, so I moved back over here so you can get maybe a better view. I'm just going to measure what I have braided so far. Make sure I'm really close to, well, is that 35 inches? Really close to 36. All right, so that's fine. 
we're good. And maybe just for grins and giggles, I'll just do a few more here. It's, it is definitely not as easy when I'm not pulling against something here. That's fine. Okay. Now, the trick is this. Um, look at your remaining braids, and you'll identify two that are smaller. Remember, we moved the center uh, off by about six inches, six or seven inches, which created a double length here, which made it this long. Find the two long pieces and move them up. Just get them out of the way, kind of isolate these guys. Okay. Now get the other side with the green loop or the extra piece here that you tied against the chair. Undo it. And what I like to do here, and this is just for, for me because it's a little easier, I'm going to take this up here. So I have my two strands. I have what I've braided so far and I have the two long strands and I'm just going to tie this up for just a second to get this out of the way so I don't confuse it. Okay, So now I'm going to come down to here and if you aren't aware, I didn't know this until I made these, the snake knot, um, I'm sure it's called the snake head knot, but anyway the snake knot wraps around this bottom piece. Okay, So what I need to do is to attach this side of the lanyard that I've just braided to the first part of the um, braided lanyard. So what I do, I'm going to zoom in here for just a little bit, I identify the piece that's going to be um, the very, very end, which remember how I said that my multicolored one was going to be on top, so now it's at the very bottom, um, you know, because I was braiding like this. And I count up six black rings. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me move this out of the way so you can see it more easily. Okay, so there's the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six. On that sixth one, I'm going to pull it apart like that. Okay, and I'm going to get these two short pieces that I have isolated and I'm going to feed it through these, this knot like this. Okay. Now this will officially attach it, attach the two sides together. Sorry, I'll try to stay in camera view here. All right, so I have the bottom. I have the two shorter pieces that I have just fed through and I have the rest of the lanyard and I'm going to pull it tight like this. Okay. Now, I'm going to not pull too tight here but pretty tight. All right, so here's the part that always scares me because once you do this, you're kind of committed. The pieces that have pulled through the knot I'm sorry, the, the base of the lanyard, I'm going to cut them. Not too short, not too big, not too long, I mean, because this is going to go underneath the snake knot. I can remember the name of that snake head. All right, so be careful not to move too much, but burn these guys together. All right, I got a little too aggressive there. So I cut that too short, so I have to really work hard to get these guys together. Sorry, I don't know if you guys saw that or not. So these have been fused together. Show all the different sides there. So what they went through this sixth knot, so remember, one, two, three, four, five, and now on the sixth one, I pulled it apart like this and fed the two shorter pieces through there and then fused them together. All right, so now that I've done that, the two pieces are joined. I can to get rid of my nice uh, green holder there and I need to identify the two long pieces. 
Okay. All right. So I need to identify a left and a right. Um, I'm going to put, you see where I have the two burn pieces right here? Where if they're fused, I'm going to make that the back of the necklace. So, and, and sometimes it doesn't always work. It's more on the side more than anything else. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to leave that just the way it is because then you can see what I'm doing with it. All right, so now this first couple steps are a little tricky to start the snakes. Um, I'm going to look that up right now. Hang on a second. Alright, so it's just called a snake, a snake knot, not a, I keep thinking of Turk's head, but it's a snake knot. Okay, so this side, so here's the top and here's the bottom. This side will always be on the, this side. This is important to remember. So when I start weaving and going through knots, I'll always pull this to this side at the end of the knot. And the same is true for this one. Okay, so for this first step, the first couple steps are a little tricky, so I'm going to take this side, the end of this, and feed it underneath. Let me back up a little bit here, so I can see you get a, a big picture. This comes around the back like this, and then just back through like that. Okay. Nothing too fancy. It's just a simple little. Not here. I did that wrong. Okay, all right. So what I did wrong, just because it's, I'll show you because it's a good example, is I had the loop up like this and then went through. And that's wrong. Put the loop down and then go through. So it's, and this black cord is going to be inside the loop. So I'm going underneath everything and back through the loop. Okay, so get a good look at that there. So I can tighten that up a little bit. You'll still see. If it adjusts here. Oh, hang on. Okay. You can still see the burnt part right here where I singed it together. Right there. And I'm putting it just above the knot. So I'm going to pull that around. Okay, good. Now, the black side, so we've put the gray one off to the side. The gray, the black side's a little bit the same in that I make a knot. I'm going to go around on top of the gray, come back. Okay, now this is important. Now watch this carefully. This is the gray one that I just sent through. I'm going to loosen that a tad and bring it, bring the black end down into that loop and then pull it to the side back towards. Remember, the black always goes to the side, so pull it to that side. This is the hardest part, so if we can just get through that, you'll be fine. So here's the loop I made. It went. It went around, okay, on top of this, and then I kind of pull it tight. So I'm going to pull that tight and pull that tight. I'm going to pull them both kind of tight. Not too tight, though. All right, so now look at the back. So everything's kind of reversed. The black is going to go around. I'll just back up so you can kind of see this here. So here's the black side. It's now on the right. Um, and I guess another easy way to state this is whatever side the cord 
that color cord starts on is where it's going to end on. So I'm going to go around the back, make sure my cord's nice and straight here. Go around the back, and I'm going to feed through that gray loop. I'm going to loosen it just a touch and feed through this loop. I bet at this point you're going, this is way harder than I thought. I swear, it, if you just kind of follow it, it you'll, you'll try it a couple times and make a few mistakes. Just pull that. Now, when you pull on it, make sure that the loop that you just created goes underneath the other paracord that's already there. You don't want it to go on top or anything like that. That's wrong. Have it go underneath. Because remember what the end result is, right? So they need to be, they need to kind of stay in line there. All right. So I kind of pull that tight. So I have two black and one gray. And, a, and this gray is coming out the side. All right, so now I'm going to flip this way. And so that's, we basically, now you know everything. We just have to do it over and over again. And I'll show the whole thing so you kind of get the feel of it. So I take the gray side. I'm going to loop around the back. I'm going to pull the second loop here. So there's one, two black loops. I'm going to pull the second one, the bottom one. Feed it through. And then... Pull it back to the same side. Okay, once I've done that, then I can pull that black side to tighten it. I want to make sure that this is underneath. And then I can tighten that just a little bit, not too tight because you end up having to undo it again. Okay, so we're starting to see the pattern here just a little bit. But on the back, um, you'll see that I need, I have these two here. All right, so let me just do a few more of those, and I'll get to the end here. Okay, there's my two loops. I pull that around, pull that out, I mean, and feed it through. Like I said, the first one will take a few, a little while. I see you got my two loops there. So I pull on the second one, take the black one, feed it around the back, and pull it back down. Hit the camera. Okay, flip it around. I see my two blacks, sorry, two blacks right there. Feed it around. Pull it through. Tighten it up just a little bit. I just keep doing that over and over. I see I got two loops here. Pull it out a smidge. Loop the black around. Come through. Now the black does not intersect itself. It just go. It basically just wraps around. Meaning it's not going back through itself in the loop. Sorry, I keep getting out of the camera here. All right, let me finish up. Okay, I'm gonna change the angle here just a little bit to make sure you guys are getting this. So here I can see that I have these two that um, are going to happen next. I need to take this black one, come around, loosen up the bottom and then feed the black one in there and just pull it through and just check the bot check the back to make sure that you know that next strand is going underneath and then you know, just pull them tightly just a little bit here not too tight flip it over and there I see I have two strands right there so that's my indicator that that's next so take this side, go back around, feed it on through, 
give it a gentle nudge or a tug, flip it over. And just keep repeating to get all the way down. here three or four more Two more. All right, I think I'm done here at the bottom. So now I just need to finish it. So I don't want to go too far because I want to make sure that this part can still stick out and I can feed a piece of leather through there. So I just carefully snip and then be careful how I point my flame out. Alright, and same thing on the other side. Leave a little piece of plastic on the wife's uh, towel. Tell no one. All right, and there you go. It's done. So, you know, when these cool off, you can kind of hide them just a little bit more if you wish. Ow, not cooled off yet. So, there you have it. A lanyard with the ropes, um, kind of a circular knot, and then a snake knot down at the bottom with a little loop on the end. Good luck.